Welcome to Component Studio 2. Today I'm going to show you a slightly more advanced example of a project in Component Studio 2. Uh, we're going to build out a trivia card game. Uh, still not uh, exceptionally advanced, we'll get to more of those as we go on, but, uh, but it'll introduce some new concepts like simple table and colors. Uh, so without further ado, why don't we get started? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm already logged into Component Studio and I'm going to click create game and uh, we'll just call this trivia. Okay, uh, we're going to create a design and we'll just call it trivia again. And it'll be a poker deck uh, that we're going to use, but we want it sideways so that we can put longer text on it, I think. Um, we'll need a unique back for each front, or yeah, for each face. And uh, we need to create a new data set. Uh, we're going to go over to the data set here and uh, let's edit it quick. Now, I could just manually enter things in here, but I showed you that in the previous video, so I thought this time, uh, let's talk about uh, CSV imports. CSV is comma separated values, it's an export from a spreadsheet. So to do that, you just go up here, click uh, the CSV button and hit import CSV, and then choose a file from your hard drive. In this case, I've already prepared a trivia file, and we will import that. And now you can see we've got our data for our questions. Uh, how I've done this is everyone has a quantity of one. Uh, each card has a number as a name. Oftentimes in trivia games, you will see this uh, just printed in really fine print somewhere on the card just to identify the card for bug testing purposes, that sort of thing. Um, and then I have a series of questions and answers. So Q1 uh, and A1, Q2, A2, Q3, A3, that sort of thing. Uh, just very simple uh, kinds of information that you might need for a trivia game. Okay, let's go over to our design and uh, let's edit it. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, rename this group. Uh, this is again, simple design, so I'm probably only gonna need one group. So I'll just call this the front of the card, something like that. Uh, you can call it whatever you'd like. Uh, name is not very important. Uh, but what is important is all of the content that needs to go into that card. So let's start by uh, doing something we didn't do in the last one. Let's add a background. So I clicked add box uh, and we're gonna call this the face background. Um, again, you can call it whatever you'd like. Uh, but the important thing here is I'm going to go to the fill section and tell it what color I want. Now I could click this little thing here and you know use the color picker to pick out, pick out a color. Uh, but I'm going to just type in a color that I want because I want to show off that you can actually type in things like uh, color names and Component Studio just recognizes uh, col uh, certain color names. Um, and we will have a list in the help very shortly for those. Uh, so anyway, I typed in light blue here, um, and now I've got this nice light blue color. So we've got a background color. Let's add some text. Uh, first, I think we're going to add our little um, our little number. We talked about the name of the card being a number so that you can uniquely identify each card. Uh, so let's do that. Uh, let's close out face here and card number. And uh, let's see, we want to go into the text and we want to get the name of the card. I click row, I click name, that copies it into my clipboard so I can paste it there. So again, this is pulling the name from our data set. As I go through here, you can see that the number up here for the cards represents the number that is displayed now because the name is the same in both places. Uh, but because this is just, uh, you know, this is just for our own internal purposes, not really for the game, we want to make this really uh, kind of small and out of the way. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is go over here and uh, set this to be into the lower right corner. Um, and the other thing I want to do is make this small. So I'm going to make a new style called, let's say, card number. Now this won't exist yet. Um, but, and because it doesn't exist, it uses a really small, just built-in font. But I'm going to uh, copy this and go up here to the Style Manager and create a style called Card Number. 
and then we will go into the font here and we're going to set the font size uh, to 25 pixels. We want it pretty small. In addition, I want to change the font color. Um, so let's do like dark red as our font color. Oop. Autocorrect got me there. Um, okay, so we've got dark red. So now we've got a really tiny little um, number down there in dark red. Uh, so we're all good to go. And that's again being applied because we applied this style called card number here. Uh, now I could go to, you know, back to body, which is what it was originally, but uh, you can see how that works. Okay, good. Moving on. Uh, we don't need this anymore. So let's move on to um, the table. Uh, you can you could lay out text on on a card a number of ways, but in this case, we're going to have you know three questions uh, and three answers on the two different sides. So it seems reasonable to just proportion the card into thirds and make uh, make our data that way. So I'm going to use a table because it's very easy to proportion it into thirds with that. So we click this this button here. We go to simple table. Uh, and you can see that it has already proportioned it into thirds for us. Uh, that is because in here under the table cells, it says two columns and three rows. So we could very easily say five columns if that's what we wanted. In this case, we do want two columns and three rows, uh, but we want, um, I wanna kind of say like A, B, C over here. Uh, so this column should be really narrow. So what we're gonna do is change it from equal sizing for the columns to manual sizing. And I'm gonna change this column widths field uh, to 100 comma zero. And so what that does, is it says 100 pixels to this first column and the zero gets filled in with whatever else is left. Uh, so just take up you know, the remaining space. Um, and so I could say 100 comma 200 or something like that and get something very specific, but then I'm, I'm gonna get an error because I haven't used the full width of the table. So instead of having to do math, the system will do math for you. Any place you use a zero, it will proportionally use up the remainder of the space. Make sense? Okay. Um, so we've got, our, we've got our width, we've set, our, uh, set it to manual. Um, the next thing I wanna do is actually put in the data for these cells. So let's go up here to A1. And like I said before, I just wanna have like A and then B, C. Just those are our three questions, right? Um, and then the actual question uh, we'll get from our row data. Uh, I want question one, I'll paste it into here. And then in here, I will get question two. And then in B3, I will get uh, question three. And we'll just get all three of those put in there. Now, I think this would look much better if these were centered vertically uh, within there. So we're gonna go down to uh, text formatting here, and we're gonna set our vertical alignment to be middle. And I think that looks better. Uh, hopefully you agree. If you don't, you can make yours any way you like. So that's the beautiful thing about Component Studio is it, it flexes to your will. Whatever you need is what you'll get. Um, okay, we don't need table cells. We don't need table or text formatting. We need table formatting now uh, to do the rest of this. I don't like the fact that there's this border around the outer part of the table. Uh, so we're gonna turn that off right here. And I also don't like this column separator right here. So we're gonna turn that off as well. So we're gonna leave the row separator in place. Um, and I think I'm gonna be pretty happy with that. I think we're done with getting our data in for that. But this whole ABC thing over here doesn't look really great. So uh, let's, let's go ahead and format that a little bit nicer. Uh, so that the questions A, B, and C stand out a little better. So to do that, we're gonna go back up here to the plus menu and we're gonna hit orb. Uh, and I want to fill in this orb with a light green color, like so, okay. And we need to make it much, much smaller. It's way too big right now. So we're gonna go up here to position and size, change the width to 100 pixels by 100 pixels. So we've got a much smaller circle. Now we can move this into size to kind of get ourselves an idea 
I click this little move icon here, this will this puts us into drag and drop mode, so I can just kind of drag this around. So I want to get it kind of right over the A, and I think that's a pretty good position, uh, something in that neighborhood. Uh, now I, I'm going to um, let's see, let's put a little border on here quick. Uh, so we're going to select a color-based border. So now we've got a little circle around the circle. I think that looks nice. Um, and we should call this like Q1 background or something of that nature. Uh, we'll turn off our drag and drop here. And the problem is, of course, that this circle now is above our A. So what we want to do is we either need to move questions down in the list or, or the background up. And I'm going to move it to move questions down. And now we can see uh, that our circle is right there uh, behind the A. Uh, however, it's not quite in the right place. You can see it's off a little bit. So I think I'm gonna just type in some numbers here. Let's do, I think 55 would be a good, um, a good place for that uh, thing. And I think 135 is close, but 140 is probably better. Yeah, that looks nicer. So uh, we can do our fine adjustment. We can do our, uh, our major adjustments with drag and drop, and then we can just type in for fine adjustments. And I think that worked out pretty well. I'm pretty happy with that. So let's move on and let's make some more of these. We should make one for B and one for C. So I'm gonna duplicate, copy it to front. Uh, and there you go, we got, we got it back up here. And we're gonna change this one to be Q2 BKG. And uh, we need to change its position uh, because it needs to be uh, over the B, not over the A. So um, I think, let's try 360, that looks about right. You can see over here on the right-hand side, I'm sorry, on the left-hand side, uh, there are these numbers that's representing the number of pixels. You can also see up here, uh, it shows you where your mouse cursor is. That also can help you uh, gauge where something is gonna be placed in the environment. Uh, so you can uh, make educated guesses as to where stuff is positioned. You can also, of course, just drag and drop some more and, and get it into position. Uh, let's see, let's go ahead and change this one to orange, I think, for the color. And I think we're done with that one. Let's duplicate this one more time and we'll call it Q3 background so and uh, let's move this one down to nah, five 585 let's say uh, yep that looks good and uh, we need a new color though so let's go into fill here and let's do like pink this time there we go that all looks good uh, the only problem is of course uh, we need our questions to come after all of these things so that they're on top. So I'm gonna move the questions to the bottom of my list here. And now uh, that's going on. Now, one thing I should point out um, is that I like operating from top to bottom. So this, this, this first thing here uh, on the top of my list is the first thing that's gonna get executed, second thing executed, third thing executed, and so on. Um, other people may prefer it to be uh, more like Photoshop where the bottom layer is the first thing, the next layer, and you're kind of building up more physically. I think of it from a programmer perspective and other people think of it from a visual perspective. So depending on who you are, you might want this to work differently. So there is a setting right up here in the corner. If you click that little setting there, uh, you can say layer order, top down or bottom up. So if I switch this to bottom up, now you can see everything has been reversed in this list. So the background comes first, then the card number, then uh, each of these things, right? Um, like I said, I prefer to go top down, so that's how I'm working, but you should work the way that works best for you. Uh, and at, by default, it is bottom up because I think most people will work at it from a Photoshop type perspective. Anyway, we have gotten our um, card laid out, it looks, pretty good. The only thing is we've got to do the back now so that we get our um, answers uh, on the back side. So if I look at the back right now, there's an entitled group over here. I'm just going to get rid of that. Uh, it's not necessary because I'm going to go back to the face and we're going to take this, this group that we've got here called front and we are going to duplicate that to the back. Uh, because it's basically going to be the same layout, just with different information on the back. So now I'm over here on the back again. I've got the same thing from the front. 
uh, but we want to make this look good for our uh, for our back. So um, you know, I could call this back or whatever now. Um, but what's important is we need to do the changes that are different from this side to the other side. So one change that we should probably do is in our table cells we want to be a1 instead of uh, q1 for our for our data uh, so i'm just going in here and changing this to a1 a2 etc you can of course click row and go to a3 like so copy that and then paste that over the top of this if that's easier for you since those were simple i was just making the simple changes um, uh, you know typing it directly in now um, we've got our uh, answers here and again we can relabel this stuff to make it more uh, appropriate to the back so I could call this answers now instead of questions copy um, anyway we've got our answers in place and if I go to the thing best website to prototype game components the answer is of course component studio so now we've uh, got the you know we know we have our right questions and our right answers in there uh, so we're all good on that front uh, the next thing that we need to do is uh, probably show some sort of differentiation between the front and the back so that you know people know what the questions are versus the answers. Uh, we could have, of course put a label on there, but I think I'm just going to, uh, for this simple demonstration, just going to uh, show a different background color. So uh, let's just do, go into fill here and change this to light gray. And there we go. Uh, and of course, like I said before, you could hit the three dots and use our little selector to kind of choose different colors, um, you know, for whatever we wanted to do here. Uh, in this case, I'm looking for a light gray kind of value. So I'll just select that one or I could type in light gray, you know, and get it in a value of that nature. So now when we're on the face, we've got blue and a question on the back. We've got uh, gray and an answer and to line the two up we've got our ABC that are all the same color front to back uh, so that is trivia uh, hope this was very useful to you today what we learned was how to import a CSV how to use simple table how to use named colors um, and I think uh, we also used a box and orb, which we hadn't used before. So I think this should be a good um, second installment of example projects. And uh, stay tuned for the next one. Thanks for watching.